in the country. So now all export payments have to be routed through Zambia's central bank. Sada says he welcomes Chinese investment in Zambia, Africa's biggest copper producer, but only if they obey the law, especially by employing more Zambian workers. One year after a brutal assault by Rwandan rebels, a Congolese village is struggling to return to normal. Police protection and medical assistance is offering some hope, but with legal action stalled and the attackers still on the loose, danger remains, as David Axe reports. On July 31, 2010, 300 armed men arrived in Livungi, a village of 2,000 people in mineral-rich northeastern Congo. They said they came to watch us, and we did not think it would be a problem. But then they started to rape the women around the village. It was the beginning of a four-day nightmare for Livungi. The fighters from the FDLR, a Rwandan rebel group with ties to illegal mining, raped more than 200 women and girls before fleeing into the forest. Today, the people of Livungi are slowly on the mend. But after a decade of rebel attacks, justice and a lasting peace remain distant prospects. As soon as the rebels had left Livungi, village leader Livingston Musa Musa's first thought was preventing another assault. The 17,000-strong UN peacekeeping force in Congo quickly deployed a small security team to Livungi, but many residents still did not feel safe sleeping in their homes at night. They preferred sleeping outdoors, hidden in the forest. Today, security is provided by a permanent detachment of Congolese police. With our presence here, there is a climate of confidence. The population is beginning to spend the night in its houses. Aid groups reached Livungi soon after the attack. Medical volunteers began the long process of caring for victims of sexual violence. That process continues today at a small government-run clinic. The problem is infections. A raped woman has a lot of infections. And for seven years, they didn't have much medicine here. And what were they going to do? With police protection and medical assistance, Livungi is slowly returning to normal. But justice eludes the community, and rebel groups remain active in eastern Congo. Separate trials of alleged FDLR leaders in Germany and the Netherlands have stalled. At the International Criminal Court in The Hague, alleged FDLR leader Calixte Mbaru Shimana faces 13 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity, stemming from the FDLR's rampages in Congo in 2009. Separately, alleged FDLR President Ignace Mirwana Shiaka and his deputy Straton Musoni are on trial in Germany for war crimes and crimes against humanity. But all three cases have stalled for lack of evidence. Lavungi is on the mend. But with rebels still on the prowl and their alleged leaders living as free men, Congo's civilians can only wonder if the danger to them still remains. David Axe for VOA News. Radical cleric and terrorist Anwar Al-Olaki was killed on Friday in Yemen, reportedly by an airstrike coordinated by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency. Al-Olaki constructed the explosive for some of Al-Qaeda's most notorious attacks, including the underwear bomb won by Nigerian militant Omar Farouk Abdul-Mutalib, who attempted to take down a U.S. airliner. Viewers Sean Moran.